Hi all, welcome to BMC. I'm Dr. M. Have you ever noticed your cat exhibiting some odd behaviors? They might ripple their skin, they might be grooming a bunch, they might all of a sudden take off with a weird burst of energy. Well, join me today. This is a video you are not going to want to miss. We are going to dive into feline hypersensitivity syndrome. So join me, you'll learn something today. Feline hypersensitivity syndrome is known by a number of different names. Some people might call it rolling skin syndrome. Some people associate it with the Siamese breed of cat. Some people call it a neuritis or a neurodermatitis. Other people think that this is actually a psychomotor epilepsy. So what could actually be going on with your cat? Well, let's discuss the common symptoms that people notice next. FHS can occur in a cat of any age, but we most commonly see it start in young adults, cats that are say one to about five years of age. Males and female cats are equally affected, but we do see some breeds that tend to be more commonly affected than others. Siamese, Burmese, Persian, and Abyssinians are some of the most commonly affected cat breeds. The cat might start to have a lot of rippling or rolling of the skin. It's most commonly along their back, sometimes near the base of the tail. As a veterinarian, when we do our physical exam, sometimes we'll find pain in the lumbar vertebrae or the musculature surrounding the lumbar vertebrae. It's also common to see midriasis when a cat is having a bout of FHS. They might also stare at their tail, flick their tail, attack their tail. They might also stare at their flanks or groom excessively at those areas. It can also be noted that some cats will chew or bite at their forelimbs or at their paws, and often the cats will run wildly around your home. They might be vocalizing. You might also note a change in kind of what their baseline behavior is. Cats that are generally friendly might want nothing to do with you. Cats that generally don't want to be touched might want you to be petting them. It can just be a flip in what their usual behavior is. These episodes can also also be induced by people petting cats in some cases, and there are also some people who notice that there is a more common time of day where their cat might have these episodes. People tend to report morning and evening more often, and in a way this could make sense because cats after all are crepuscular creatures. The next thing that is very important to know is that FHS is actually a diagnosis of exclusion. There are a bunch of potential other causes that must be ruled out first before we can even consider a diagnosis of feline hypersensitivity syndrome. Very commonly, we will see dermatological issues, skin issues, things that cause the cats to have an allergic reaction and get itchy are very common. If it's something that's around the tail base, this is an area where cats with flea infestations or flea allergies tend to have the most itchiness. However, it could also be an environmental allergy, it could be a food allergy, they could have a secondary infection going on that's causing itching. There's a bunch of different derm issues that cause our cats to feel itchy. We also need to consider different types of musculoskeletal pain. They might have hip dysplasia, arthritis, joint issues, old fractures, old injuries, any of those sorts of things need to be screened for, considered, and ruled in or out. We also cannot forget that neurological causes can be present in cats that have these symptoms. I think about the possibility of intervertebral disc disease causing nerve pain, but we could also have something like a brain tumor or some focal seizure type activity going on. We also can't forget that an infectious inflammatory issue in the central nervous system could cause these symptoms and we also need to remember that tumors in various places could also cause cats to have these symptoms. This is why a proper medical workup is the number one first and most important thing to do if you have a cat that you suspect has feline hypersensitivity syndrome. The precise medical workup will vary a little bit from cat to cat based on what your veterinarian sees on the physical exam but we need 
need to do things like blood work and urinalysis panel. We also need to check with x-rays for old bone issues or to try to rule in or out the likelihood of musculoskeletal damage. We also might need to do skin scrapings to check for secondary diseases. It's pretty common to trial medication to help with itching like a steroid because if the cat is having an allergic issue and we give them a steroid then it should really help their symptoms. If the thought is more likely that your cat has a neurological underlying cause for their symptoms then you might need to see a veterinary neurologist. They might need to do some more advanced imaging like CT or MRI. Sometimes we will test CSF fluid and do other neurological tests to rule out all of those possibilities. It is very common that part of this medical workup is when we do trials of a variety of medications. This is because there are a lot of medical issues that we're just not very good at picking up with our tests. So it's most common to start with a trial of appropriate prescription flea prevention medication plus or minus a medication to treat itching. If that has no benefit to your cat, then the next step is to be doing a trial of pain medication because if your cat has musculoskeletal or nerve pain, then we need to check for that and give them a combination of an anti-inflammatory and something like gabapentin that does better job at treating nerve pain in order to try and rule in or out the possibility of pain being present. If the steroids, anti-inflammatories, and flea treatments have no effect, then the next step is to give a trial of an anti-seizure medication. This is because there are some cats that are not having grand mal seizures, you know, their whole body isn't involved, they aren't losing consciousness, but they could be having focal seizures and it can present in the same way as a cat that has feline hypersensitivity syndrome. So let's say you have gone through this entire medical workup. You've worked with a veterinary dermatologist, you've worked with a veterinary neurologist, you've worked with your GP veterinarian, and nobody is finding any reason for your cat's behavior. Well, then we also need to consider some behavioral causes for behaviors like this. The most common is, say, if your cat is feeling a bit conflicted about something, say they want to go eat, but they're not feeling safe to get to where the food is, or they want attention from you, but they're not feeling safe to come to where you are because of other animals or other humans being present, then because of that conflict, they might do what we call a displacement behavior. An example of a displacement behavior is something like the cat might all of a sudden start grooming for a minute just to soothe themselves with the conflict that they're feeling. Displacement behaviors are very normal, very common, and it's important that you recognize them so you can alter your home environment to help your cat out, but those in and of themselves are not abnormal. Normal. The problem becomes if the conflicting situation is present for a prolonged period of time, then the displacement behavior might persist even when the conflict is resolved. In this sort of a scenario, we think of this more as a compulsive type of behavior, and this is when it can start to cause some problems. Next, we need to consider what the average treatment plan looks like for cats that are suspected to have feline hypersensitivity syndrome. First, we need to address the underlying behavioral stress that can contribute to these symptoms for our cats. That means creating a very reliable schedule for everything that the cat needs. That means feeding them at the same time every day. That means having morning and evening playtime with a wand-type toy. It also also means working on positive reinforcement training with the cat. This helps to increase your bond with the cat, it gives them mental enrichment, and it also can help them to understand that you are paying attention to them and that you will respect their boundaries and what they are saying that they need. So for example, you could teach your cat to sit, you could teach your cat to recall, you can teach your cat to shake a paw, you can teach cats all sorts of things, and it's fun to do so. We also need to anticipate situations that can trigger these sorts of episodes. So if you know that your cat doesn't enjoy being pet in a certain way, then don't do that. Stop it. <laughs> 
If you know that changes in your schedule are stressful for your cat, then you will need to discuss medication to use to help reduce the stress that they feel. And lastly, we also need to be absolutely certain that we do not punish the behaviors when the cat does them. If you punish your cat for grooming or racing around or biting at themselves, all it does is increase the conflict and the stress that the cat feels and this will make their behaviors worse. I know it can be frustrating, but punishment must be avoided at all costs. For medication options, there are three classes of prescription medications that we commonly use for these cats. We might use a tricyclic antidepressant, we might use an SSRI, and or we might use benzodiazepines. Now each individual may respond in a unique way to each individual medication and or dose. So it can take some trial and error to find a medication or combination of medications that works best for your individual cat. I want to reiterate here here that feline hypersensitivity syndrome is and must be a diagnosis of exclusion. It is irresponsible to skip over the medical workup and just decide this is strictly something that's a compulsive behavioral issue. There are so many cats that get misdiagnosed and undiagnosed and who suffer because we don't approach them by properly doing medical workups to look for the more common and more likely causes for these sort of symptoms and so first and foremost please 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 make sure that a medical workup is done before anything else for your cat. I hope that you have found all of this information useful. If you have a topic you'd like me to cover in the future please comment it down below. I love to read all of your comments and interact with you in that way. I also highlight a comment from the previous week in every new video. Here is this week's comment. I do put up a new video most Fridays and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. You take care, have a good weekend, bye!